On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we take the exhaust off of my Turbo Aerial Atom and find out just how bad it is. I think I broke it pretty well. What is going on guys? I am Watch Chair Go, and like I said, we're here in the garage at home with my 2011 Aerial Atom SRA with the Honda K20 PFI speed built. This engine is wild. And, uh, and honestly, it made so much power and there was so much vibration at the track, we broke the exhaust. We broke it real good. You can see the hole right, right there. There's a hole and there's more hole. Anyway, let's get this thing apart and see just how bad it actually is. So PFI speed fixed a bunch of the welds on the exhaust. Basically, they said none of this was back purged when it was welded together. Um, it's all titanium. You can see it's got like the beautiful color that it's changed with a little bit of heat in it. Um, unfortunately, the welds just aren't holding up. And now that the muffler side is fixed, the exhaust side broke. So <laughs> today's game plan mission, should you choose to accept it, is to get the uh, turbo off of the flange. And I don't want to take the whole thing apart. I'm going to try not to take the whole thing apart. I'd like to just get the turbo off and set it on top of the engine. That way I don't have to pull all the oil lines, make a huge mess in the garage. And honestly, there's a plenty of extension to pull this off. I know the flange bolts are gonna be a little tricky, so we'll start by pulling the tag bracket off of the intercooler. I don't wanna pull the intercooler if I don't have to. And uh, maybe we'll take the wastegate off. I kinda wanna leave it and maybe just label the lines to make it easy for the welder to see where this needs to go. And then we have to get deep down in there and get the manifold off the engine itself. I was driving this thing every day until the manifold broke and now I haven't driven it in two days. Sad, right? <laughs> I'll do you guys one better. I got the 1198 out. This is the actual channel logo. If you didn't know, the channel logo is a picture of me riding this bike that uh, one of my artist friends made for me and it's incredible. This is the first time I've ridden this bike in about three years. Pulled the cover off it, hit the start button and it ripped right to life. Proof. Unfortunately, oh, it is in neutral. 1198 racing. <laughs> Starts like it needs to go back on its battery tender. But hey, battery tender did a good job. All right, we need 13 and also a three quarter to get those O2 sensors. Time to pull the rear nacelle. Easy part. It doesn't look like I might have to pull all the plastics. I don't want to, but I might have to. Isn't it nice how fast this stuff comes apart when you've got race fasteners? The reason I don't want to pull the plastics is because the coolant reservoir has to come off, which is a little on the annoying side. It looks like we lost another bolt. The standoff that holds the vacuum manifold disappeared while we were racing or driving it and appears to have fully vanished. Okay, we've got a ton of access now. Let me grab some masking tape, label the wastegate lines, and we'll cut off the zip ties, and we'll be ready to remove the wastegate itself, which will take all the stress off of this thing. I'll just give the wastegate to the welder so he can check it for clearance and make sure everything's good there. I know there was plenty of clearance before, so there's no reason there shouldn't be now. Of course, it's crazy tight in here, but I'm getting that little baby V-band clamp off of the wastegate, and I think we're pretty close. The last tool for the job, the handy dandy pry bar, I mean, I'm sorry, straight the screwdriver. Uh, pop this V-band loose. Oh, what a nightmare to get loose. Whole car is moving. All right, we won. I'm sure I can hook this back up now because I have a much better understanding of uh, boost control at this point, but I'd rather just label it and make our lives easy when it goes back together. And then we will pop the exhaust off, pop the turbo off, and try to squeeze this exhaust manifold out of there. It's gonna be a tall order. Got some labels made. We've got wastegate side and wastegate top. Uh, if you guys don't know the difference between like a wastegate and a uh, blow-off valve, which I, you know, I assume at this point 
most people watching do. Everyone watching this channel is typically very technically proficient, uh, knows everything about a platform. But if you don't, the wastegate is what bleeds off the exhaust before it goes through the turbo, right? So if the wastegate's open, you're not putting all that pressure through the turbo, so you're not making any boost. Right? So since our what broke here is where the actual wastegate is, it created its own wastegate, making no boost. It's like it's permanently open. The blow-off valve is what dumps the excess boost pressure out of the intake tube here. So the blow-off valve opens when it needs to get rid of all that boost really fast. The wastegate opens so you can stop generating boost or generate less boost. This wastegate's on a 10, 10 pound spring setup now, a four and a six. Ah! <clears throat> so this is our wastegate and the dump tube and it looks like we actually had a little bit of bypass there. I don't know if that's from our breakage or, you know, just a little bit of a leak in that baby V band. Those baby V bands are very annoying to work with, but they're so pretty. So I'll clean that up when it goes back together. Hopefully we can keep it from leaking on version two. So we've made good progress here. Now, let me grab a 10 deep and that'll let us pull this clamp off of the uh, intercooler. And I'll need wrenches on wrenches to get the turbo flange off because I, uh, I know how tight those are. They're very tight. After what was way more work than you would ever expect, the exhaust is finally free. I say that as it's not quite free. All right, there we go. And I found another cool problem. We had no boost control. We were leaving on 10 pounds. Huh, just keeps getting better and better. Because of the way this was wired before, I didn't have the uh, weather pack terminal, so I didn't have a way to uh, fix all the wiring. Ah, oh, what a mess. There's the wide band. The exhaust is off. All right, now it looks like we can finally get to the turbo and fight this battle. So I already got a bunch of this loose. There's just one bolt back there that was hard to get to. And I think we ought to be able to get that out now. These are all 14s. I got the bolts out of the manifold flange. Now the only thing holding this thing on is oil lines. Pull this gasket out so it doesn't get hurt. And this silicon coupler. Come on. There we go. She's free. I'm going to grab a bunch of zip ties and just tie this thing up. Hopefully that works out. I have the rubber 2021 zip tie here. Y'all yeah, get it, right? I couldn't find the zip ties, so I just grabbed what I had. Everything's off with the manifold itself. Turbo is supported. Let's try to break this manifold loose. I bet it's really on there. It's really on there. Be cool if I had any power tools over here, but I do not. So we are doing today's mission 100% by hand. Uh, everything's over at the shop that I want, even my O2 sensor wrenches, which is why we took the O2 sensors off with the exhaust instead of trying to pull them off the exhaust. The easy way. We've got three down, but there's two left and one is a stud and it looks like it might be fully impossible to get to without removing the VTEC solenoids. I don't want to do that because first we didn't do it before knowing it would dump oil everywhere and it's still going to dump oil everywhere. So I really don't want to have to do that. Boy is it buried. Who would have ever guessed the VTEC solenoids had to come off this time? If you don't want to pull the engine, that's how you take the manifold off. All right. So that's the last nut right there. Hopefully it just 
comes right off. Let's see if this exhaust comes out. Grab the gasket. Yes! This was supposed to take 10 minutes, not 45. But, oh well. Take a look at our breakage. Mmm! So good! You can see it's actually a failed weld for sure. It did end up cracking the pipe, but I think all this other stress where the weld just straight pulled out, you can see where the pipe was joined in and then the weld went over it and then the bead broke. <sighs> I think that's where all the magic happened. Our exhaust leak doesn't look as prevalent on the uh, wastegate mount side. All right, now let's uh, clean up, get this thing over to a welder. That brake is so nasty. It runs all the way around this thing too. You can see it way down inside there. There's hardly anything holding it on. That's the only weld right there. Deep down underneath the flange that's holding this thing together. Well, that said, I couldn't be happier that the weld held up that much because it kept the wastegate on the back of the car. It didn't fall off on the trip back from the track, which is something I was actually very worried about. I was like, well, if all else fails, those hoses are on there tight and they're zip tied on, the hoses will hold the wastegate on the car. Luckily, they didn't have to do that because the welds held up and it got us home. Nothing better than that, honestly. If you make it home, everything's cool. So the guy who's gonna weld this up is on vacation right now. He'll be back in a couple of days. He said midweek. So tomorrow, Thursday, something like that, I'll get the manifold over to him. Hopefully he can just put a clamp on there, pull it back together, uh, clean out the old weld and make it work again. Uh, that's you can kind of reflow this metal. That's what happened on the other muffler too. Uh, you get in there with the TIG and heat it up and just start laying a new bead in. So hopefully we can get that done correctly and it won't fail and that should get this car right back together. And while that's going down, I'll weather pack the boost control solenoid so that works again. And there's something else that needs done. Oh yeah, the ground for the water temp. I'll get that done too. And then this thing will all be back to working just the way it's supposed to, except for the speedometer. Man, there's a to-do list on this car. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. We found the problem. It's not the worst thing ever, but it is uh, quite the failure. And uh, we'll be back on it very soon. So don't forget to head on over to shop, watch JR.com or get your cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. Doesn't it look like a shark? I don't know. I just love this car a lot. I don't like daily driving it, but I love the car.